Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're back doing another Guilds of Ravnica Intermediate Swiss Draft League. Definitely taking the Beast Whisperer here. Super strong rare. We have Might of the Masses, also Deadly Visit. And those are the only two worthwhile first picks, I would say. But Beast Whisperer is a great card, super powerful. Certainly a game flipper, so we'll take it. Followed by an Assure a symbol. Well, I love this card, so we're definitely going to take that. Um, I, I've played it a lot, too. It's a really great card. And it's a foil, so somebody just took the regular rare out of this pack. Other notable good cards in here. The Dark Blade Agent, the Watcher in the Mist, Hypothesis, oh. Flight of Equinauts, and that's about it. Let's take the Assure symbol. All right, here looks like it's a pretty easy Luminous Bonds. I talked in the last draft about my issues with this card. Uh, it comes up more often than I'd like it to, but at the same time, it can do what it needs to do sometimes and win you the game. So, still an important card. I just wish its shortcomings weren't so glaring in this format, especially given that it costs more than pacifism. They've downgraded pacifism, and uh, it hurts. Fresh-faced recruit in here, Hitchclaw Recluse on color with what we've already got. Boros Challengers, very strong card. Severed Strands, pretty playable. I like the Poisoner a lot. Let's take the Bonds. Okay. I'm okay taking Gorgon here. I think it's a really great card, actually. Even when you uh, have to pay double green for it, which it looks like we may have to. Then again, maybe we just splash a symbol. But then I probably wouldn't splash Luminous Bonds. Hmm. Well, either way, something to think about. But Pitiless Gorgon is the pick for us. Other good cards in here. Burglar Rat, Capture Sphere... Muse Drake. And that's about it. Okay, seeing some later black picks that are pretty good. The Snitch and the Swarm. We have a Dissident, which is just pretty solid two drop. Otherwise, we take the Prey Upon. Currently do not have great bodies for that, but it's early yet. So, I could take the Prey Upon. Dissident is pretty good. I think we'll go Prey Upon. I'm going to speculate that we're going to find some Convoke Fatties that we want to play. Making it worth our time. Conclave Guild Mage, great card. We're going to take it over the Peacemaker. The Dissident number two, the Recluse, the Take Heart. They're all good, but Guild Mage... Makes armies, and I've talked about this before, but it's actually interesting how often that creatures you control gain trample ability comes up for Selesnya, and people tend to forget about it too, which is nice. Taking a wood shaper here. I like playing wood shaper when you have beast whisperer out. Really nice value. Flower Flourish is a good card. There's another Wood Shaper in here, and we have Iron Shell Beetle. All of these options are good. What I like about Flower Flourish is, I don't know, you just feel a lot happier keeping a hand that's got one land if it's got one land and a Flower Flourish in it. And conversely, it's nice to be able to top deck a Flower Flourish in the mid to late game and have it do stuff too. Just, it's dynamic. And that usually equates to a pretty awesome magic card, so we'll take it. Mighty of the Mass is wheeling. Great news for us. It's a fantastic card. Otherwise, I would pretty easily take the gate here, get our fixing on as early as possible. But Mighty of the Mass is I'm going to be happy with. All right, here's a pretty easy Selesnya Guild Gate. Taking over 10th District Guard and Restorer. Late Dark Blade Agent in here. Hitchclaw Recluse is actually a pretty good card. I like it. I think it blocks more than people realize. 
Like, it's nice to even block, like, a wee Dragonauts. They have to cast two spells to get by it. Um, it blocks the Watcher in the Mist. These are just highly playable cards that it can pretty easily block. Not to mention anything on the ground, too. It's good. All right, Crush Contraband's a nice sideboard card, so pretty easy pickup for us. We'll take the gate here and let the black and the blue keep on flowing. Getting the Dissident second to last pick is great news. Our deck is looking very good. I feel like we have carved ourselves really well into these colors already. And, uh, yeah, we're looking really good. Every single one of these is totally playable. Venerated Loxodon, what a gift. Easily taking this, great card. Otherwise, you know how, how I feel about Glaive of the Guild Pact. One of my favorites in the format. Generous Stray would be welcome in here as well. But let's take the Loxodon. Who knows, maybe we wield the Glaive? How deep is this pack? Drake is great. Shaman's great. Cyclops will get picked up. Strands. It's possible. Not likely, but possible. I think... Actually, the Glaive has gotten a little more popular, I want to say. I, I want to say people have kind of come around on it. I know I did. I was not impressed early on, but I'm pretty big proponent now. Underrealm Lich. Well, we could splash for it. It's a good card. Um, I kind of want to take the Glaive, though. I don't think Underrealm Lich is worth anything. By the way, I think it's worth less than a ticket, actually, if I recall correctly. Whoops. I clicked on the foil one, which is actually worth a decent amount. Oh, it's actually worth a ticket and a half. Well, that's surprising. Otherwise, we could take the Glaive. I mean, it's pretty good value. It is good value. It's pretty insane with Beast Whisper. I feel like you just end up milling yourself out with Beast Whisper, don't you? Hmm. I'm going to take it. It's a mythic. We could possibly splash for it. It's a strong effect. I've said my piece. All right, we could take the Guild Gate now. There's a Gird for Battle, though, which is pretty excellent to prey upon. Good for Battle is more of a Boros aggro card, but it's still good, especially if we do the Prey Upon. But then again, maybe I just want to take another Prey Upon. We already have the Loxodon, and we still have time to find more good bodies. For the most part, I think Good for Battle is a better card. But I like it less in this sort of mid-range plan we're doing. Whereas Prey Upon can help us... Uh, take care of a threat that needs to be taken care of. Swarm Guild Mage. Well, it's not worth splashing for. It's... I don't think it's worth splashing for. It's a great card. I do like the effects on it quite a bit. But why don't we just take the thing that lets us splash for Lich first, and then we'll think about the rest later. Um, so Recluse number two. Sprouting Renewal and... Arboretum Elemental and Take Heart and Fresh Face Recruit. Actually, just a ton of things on color for us. Sprouting Renewal, pretty good card in that it's a main deck way to deal with probably one of our biggest problems in uh, Disinformation Campaign, which just is a great card against any deck, but particularly against a mid range Selesnia. I feel like it. It's going to wreck us pretty good. We do have some decent things to offset it. Mainly the Beast Whisper, but I think we'll take the Sprouting Renewal over the Elemental here. I like just, like I said, I like having a main deck way to just deal with big problems. All right. Healer's Hawk. Good Convoke creature. It just sort of whittles away at the opponent. A one mana thing that can draw us a card with the Beast Whisper, too. Good with Loxodon. Good with Might of the Masses. I think we'll take it over the gate. Well, you can't really splash a Golgari Fine Broker easily, but I would like to play it otherwise. We'll take the Pax Favor, which is a great card. Maybe not great, but I like it a lot. Selesnia Guildgate. 
I don't need a letter of guardian or a portcullis vine. Sounds good. Let's take it. Glow spore shaman, huh? Well, don't need any of this. Guess we'll just take the shaman. I mean, we already have the lich, I guess. We probably don't need another crushed contraband. Canopy is a better sideboard option anyway. I can't think of a lot of artifacts that would cause me problems. Maybe the gatekeeper gargoyle or something, but we have a good sideboard plan now. All right, guild gate, taking it over the forager. Even the forager is, is playable. I like, I, I think I'm comfortable splashing under realm lich now. Uh, severed strands, potential splash. I'll consider it, but probably not happening. Take heart, though. Good card. So we have all these combat tricks, which is less good for our mid-range plan. Much better for aggro. Although with double prey upon, maybe having the tricks isn't so bad. Take the black card. So it does feel like we got much less white that pack, though we did get the late take heart. Um, I'm still fine being in Selesnia, though, obviously. Conclave Cavalier, great. Another Luminous Bond, but uh, Cavalier is much better. High, super high value card. Citywide Bus is actually pretty good. We only have a few creatures, from what I can see, that actually get hit by it. But District Guide would be nice, too. Easier Under Realm Lich Splash, but we got to take the Cavalier. It's just such a great card. Perfect with our prey upons too. Murmuring Mystic, jeez. Card is so good. Another Luminous Bond. We're, we're, we're actually Creature Light, so we need to take Creatures over removal here. Um, I, I love the Centaur. There's another Hawk, but we have double prey upon. Centaur's just really good. I think I'm just going to take the, the Centaur here. Get another thing that can fight. I guess this is a creature card, so we really, and this is sort of a creature card, so I guess we're at like 12, but we only have space for four to five cards if we want to count Flower Flourish as a land, which I suppose you can do. I'm going to take the Centaur. Sworn Companions, Pitiless Gorgon. So Sworn Companions helps with Convoke, and I guess Flower Flourish, but i probably take another Gorgon. It is color intensive, but we've got some gates going. I, I think we can make it work. Another one. Sounds good to me. Taking it over Hunted Witness. Um, the Scout, or the Vigilance Dude, probably just take the Scout, it can evade, and we do, really do not have any evasion at all, so, besides the Healer's Hawk, so it seems kind of important to have a little bit. So, I'm pretty comfortable playing two more, um... Spells. I don't think that's going to cause any problems. Another Gorgon, another Scout. Probably don't need another Flower Flourish. So Gorgon versus Scout. I think Gorgon's just a better card. We're going to end up playing a lot more green than white, but I am really not terribly concerned about that. Uh, Collar the Culprit, good sideboard card to have. Take the foil one. Taking another gate here. Uh, I guess not. We'll we'll take the might of the masses. Well, yeah, might of the masses is so good. We have sixteen creatures currently too. Yeah, because you just you can easily play might over. Basically, 
uh, Pax Favor, Take Heart. It's just way better. We'll take the Worm. Could actually make the deck too. Gateway Plaza or some dudes are probably not going to play. We'll take the Plaza. Now we actually don't even have to run a Swamp for our Lich, which is pretty good actually. And Plaza is also helping us cast our uh, Gorgons a little bit easier. All right, we'll take the Companions. There's a chance they make the deck. I gotta figure that out. Because we can easily play 16 lands, I think. Our curve is not so bad, and like I said, we have the Flower Flourish, so... We just have to make a couple cuts, and it might just be a Pax Favor and a Take Cart, and call it a deck, basically. Like, I can cut both of these. We still have double Mighty the Masses. Mighty the Masses with Prey Upon seems fine. Take this. Uh, yeah, it looks good. It does look good. Got even more evasion. Double Skyline Scout. I'll consider that, actually. I, I might... Uh, I might cut like uh, I might prefer the well could cut one Gorgon for curve purposes yeah and color it makes our color a little bit better but I kind of like the scouts because like I said they can evade they can trade earlier they can evade both of which are good trade early or evade late I should say both of which are good All right, well, it looks good to me. Sort by color. So these are double greens. These are whatever, a mix. So obviously way more green than white. Only one double white card in the deck, so don't really have to worry about getting white too often. We already have six green sources and four white. Space for ten more lands. No black mana necessary. If we did this, that would be twelve green, seven white. Let's do it this way. And this way we have eleven 11 green, 8 white, no, 9 white. Yeah, that should be totally sufficient. 11 green, 9 white, 3 black. Great mana. Great mana base. Looks fun. Looks fun. And uh, got some... Powerful effects in here, certainly. Wouldn't mind some more evasion than we have, but I guess Hawk Double Scout, we're going to have to just be satisfied with that. Uh, yeah, some pretty powerful card advantage effects in here. So, all right, looks like fun. We'll jam it like this. We'll see you round one. Round one, we won the die roll. We're going to play first. We better mull this one. Um, I guess we'll keep. And we'll bottom the land. So we're looking for stuff like 
our card advantage effects would ha be super helpful here. Beast Whisper, Conclave Cavalier, Smala Wood Shaper. I guess not the Underrealm Lich right now. It was a good draw. Okay. So Yeah, we'll cast the Might of the Masses. We'll block a Dark Blade agent with a soldier and then cast Might. They don't even want to do it. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Um, I think we attack with a soldier. So I guess I should have attacked before I played the land, so I could have played the Gateway Plaza. It was a bit of a mistake, but to be honest, I wasn't expecting him to block with the uh, Darkblade agent. Okay, well, the good news is Crushing Canopy is looking really good out of sideboard. Bad news is I don't think we can win this one. We take seven, so we have to flourish to gain some extra life here and not die. Well, Oxidon's cool and all, but I guess technically we don't die if uh, it's actually true. But I don't have enough to do the Gorgon plus the Loxodon. If I'd played the Plaza, I would have. So, I'm definitely getting punished by that now. Hmm. I 
All right. I think we get in. So we'll drop the Gorgon and a Gateway Plaza. And pass. Go to game two here. Let's see. So we're playing Grixis. We want the Crushing Canopy for the Flyers. We already have the Recluse to block everything. We have a Luminous Bond. We have the Prey Upon. So we should be fine. We probably cut. Well, Bigger Spore Worm didn't look great there. Well, it was still fine. What's the weakest card? Gorgon actually does look worse in this match, only because they killed us with stuff in the air, not on the ground, and it's color intensive. Okay. Cut the Gorgon. We're still at 16 creatures if you count the, the symbol and the canopy, so we should be fine. 17. Companions, too. We have a lot of creatures. Okay, we'll run it back. Wait, do I want Collar the Culprit, too? Um, I don't think so. No. You know, 1 3, a 3 1, and a 3 3, so no. Take Heart. Way to gain some life. Not bad. But I think we're okay. We want to play first. And this is a keep. Nice hand. Yeah, I like this. So we can go scout into Guild Mage, into Recluse. Another scout. Yeah, I don't mind playing another scout here, actually. I feel like we can get the beats going quicker. Okay, uh, that kind of puts a stop on uh, our plan. Well, not really, I guess. Prey upon. Uh, I think that we just go attack with scout, fly over, play a guild mage, and pass.
Okay. So that's a pretty amazing draw there. Mm, oh, could I have? Man, I could have played the recluse and done it to him too. That was a mistake. Whoops. Well. Hmm. Huh. So the question is, do I prey upon now? I kind of want to. Because they're tapped out, and this thing can actually be a problem if they give it death touch. Ah, we'll kill it. While they're tapped out, we'll just take care of it. It's, uh, I guess, something I can do instead of, since I didn't play the recluse into the loxodon. Okay, well, well, to be honest, I'm not super intimidated by that because we can still attack into it. Everything. Beast Whisper. Well, that'll do. Let's get in there. No need to pay. So we'll kill the whelp. Drop the beast whisper and pass. We've got the beast whisper, under realm lich, mill ourselves out combo. Yeah, both of them are musts, which is not ideal. Is it locket? Okay. It is. It is, in fact, a locket. And Bartism Bats. Got it. So we play Recluse, we draw... We smash with everything. Or, never mind. Play this goodie instead. Might of masses. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, let's get in there. We don't need the Beast Whisperer anyway, so. We've got the means to win here, and. I'm not afraid to just get in there. So next turn, Recluse plus Might of the Masses. All right, cool. So, a little bit of a mistake, but turned out to be okay, because we still just played the prey upon and took care of what needed to be taken care of. So I guess we do actually have a target for our Sprouting Renewal in the locket, which isn't bad, actually. Venerated Loxodon was our sole reason for winning that game. Take Heart and Pax Favor are ways around uh, Hypothesis, oh, but... I don't think, well, we really don't need the Gorgons, do we? They can attack into some things, but, like, I may rather have a 
trick. Take heart, gaining life is... Might make more sense to do the Pax Favor, because that saves basically... Well, not all of our guys. Hmm. Question is, how much do I like a pitiless Gorgon here? I'll keep it. I mean, it's a blocker for Dark Blade Agent, too. Okay. We don't need to get any more spicy than we already are. They're playing first. We're going to keep. Locks it on was a great draw. Can potentially go Guild Mage into Companions into Loxodon, which is very spicy. Okay, can still do it actually. Go Guild Mage here. And even if we don't draw the land, we can still go Sprouting Renewal, which is pretty good. Building towards that Loxodon. No black mana from our opponent. Very, very important to note. Okay, so we go Guildgate, Sprouting Renewal, Pass. And who knows, maybe they counter it? No. Okay. I'm okay with this too. So if I draw a land, we can actually go Sworn Companion, Loxodon, which would really help us a lot here. Crackling Drake is pretty good. Did in fact get to land, so we'll go Companion. Locks it on. Go a little bit beast mode here. So they got the black mana. Muse Drake with one black mana up. Well, I think we're just going to kill that crackling Drake. Crushing Canopy. That one's good, too. Um... I think we're just going to kill everything on their side. And for 14. All right, sweet. Got the match. We'll see you round two. Round two, keeping. Good looking hand. Okay. Play the scout. Another Demir deck here. Chamber Sentry. Well, that's going to get us pretty good, huh?
Dissident. All right, let's get in there. Scout will die. And we'll drop a Cavalier. Kind of wish I had a Might of the Masses here. I feel like that would punish them reasonably. But that's okay. Let's drop the Cavalier and pass. So, Chamber Sentry is an actual example of a good exile target for our Crush Contraband. Contraband, rather. And Pitiless Gorgon at least attacks reasonably well into everything our opponent's doing currently. So we have a pretty decent board against our opponent's really good uh, rare here. Another scout? Jeez. Okay. Well, let's get in there. Okay, so I imagine they'll block the Gorgon here. And I suppose that we'll drop a Dissident. Too many X1s in this hand. Oh, I feel like that's actually not bad for us at all. Okay, well, I suppose we can get in there. And then we go land, wood shaper. Recluse, well, I was hoping for something like a Loxodon, but that's all right. Locks it on or a Beast Whisper. A little more, slightly more exciting than a Hitchclaw Recluse, but at least we didn't whiff. Night Veil Sprite. Yeah, it's pretty good. And double Dark Blade Agent. Jeez. That's spicy. Beast Whisper now? How rude. Uh-oh. I forgot that I need to... That was a mistake. Because I don't have the mana. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's a predicament. Alright. Well, I guess we're going to let the, the scout die. And then we'll play a Beast Whisper. And pass. So we'll go recluse. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. We have to. Hmm. Attack with everything. Block the two things. Eight. Huh. Five mana up. I think I'm just going to play the recluse here. I could attack with the Dissident, but I feel like if they block and they have anything, it 
basically keeps me from doing anything. Attack with everything. They block. Block. They take six. Um, yeah, that didn't pan out so well for us, did it? That's too bad for us. Okay, play the companions. Okay. So, Flower Flourish would do it. Uh, Luminous Bond would probably do it. What else would probably do it? Um, Might of the Masses would probably do it. Really? Just attacking with that to draw a card. So what could I smash back with? If I attack with everything, they block my two biggest guys. They take one, three, four, five. It's not enough. So I guess we'll go like this. Gorgon. Attack with everything, they block life linking token and that, and only take, well, they take a decent amount, I guess. Um, any reason to sandbag the land? Mm, not that I can see. Um, our worm is a good draw, surprisingly. So now we may start attacking with everything. I can't, uh, huh, it's interesting. I think they likely have some sort of follow-up play, so I'm just going to block like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's a good draw.
Um, so I can trade my Elf Knight for the Gorgon. It doesn't kill... Hmm. It's kind of a... I feel like it's a little bit of a two-for-one is the problem, but getting in for six is a pretty big deal. All right, we'll do it. Okay, that's actually not great for us either. Do I offer the trade now, or do I not offer the trade? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Don't really want to trade. We do have a Luminous Bond. Do we have any other means to take care of that Gorgon? Prey Upon won't do it. Not comfortably. So it's Luminous Bond or Bust, basically? It's not great odds. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we offer the trade. I'm not particularly happy about it. I was go I would go as far as say I'm unhappy about it, but here we are. Okay. Honestly, could be worse. Oh. Well, we're pretty fortunate to get a victory there because uh, that felt like a even though we were whittling away at them, it felt like an uphill battle considering how many times they got to surveil. So, as far as evasion, we saw a Night Veil Sprite. I don't know if that's enough to justify a crushing canopy. Especially given that we've already got double prey upon. Um, this takes care of the Chamber Sentry. Didn't see any enchantments, though. Um, our X1s get a lot worse versus the sentry, but I guess it's only one card in their deck, so maybe I don't need to worry about it too much. The Pitiless Gorgon was good, so maybe I just want to do a swap, because it can attack into everything they're doing. Albeit at not the best cost. But we could dump a wood shaper. We lose a little bit of value, get a little bit of more low end. But we have some pretty powerhouse stuff that we want to find. Loxodon, Beast Whisper, Lich, Worm. I guess I'm thinking we keep it the same. I'm not seeing anything that's really lighting up as something that we need in this match currently. If I see some more flyers, I might change my mind. Well, we're going to have to mull this one, unfortunately, because I'd really like to keep this hand. This one we can keep, at least. I'll dump the guild gate. 
Looking for something a little bit spicier than that. So we go turn to Guild Mage. And not doing much unless we top deck here. Well, no Dark Blade Agent. I guess that's good news. Could have a Whisper Agent, but I think we're just going to offer the trade on that. So we'll go Plaza and pay our, pay our mana. No Whisper Agent, no Dark Blade Agent. Those, that's good. I think they probably have the Artful Takedown, which makes playing the Rosemane Centaur a lot less spicy here. But they have double Artful Takedown in the deck. I think there's a pretty good chance they have it. I'm just going to attack. Well, they're not playing it. Because I don't want to play a Centaur and, and not do it. Yeah, well, Price of Fame on that is okay, too. Better that than play a Centaur and have it get killed and not uh, do anything with it. So, I still think they have the Artful Takedown. But, um, yeah, I think we'll just play the Recluse. I'm going to try and... Do whatever I can to keep my centaur alive. Like, any sort of pump spell would be tremendously helpful here. If I can get one of my pumps that can survive the artful takedown and keep my centaur, I really think that's a, a big deal. Well, I just, I don't know what to tell you. We're going to keep passing. I just really think they just have Artful Takedown, so, uh, okay. At least I can attack with this thing. And if they have counter or whatever, I'll allow that too. Okay. I don't think we want to play any more lands, so I don't have to worry about the uh, thinger effects. The uh, the thinger. Um, I don't know why the name's escaping me right now. Uh, hmm. Disinformation campaign. Whatever. Uh Let's play Flourish. Okay. And I guess we'll pray upon here. Oh, the burglar rat. Well, perfect. Still have the artful takedown mana up. All we need is a mighty of the masses, and we just don't have to worry about it. But otherwise, we just can't.
Okay. Ah. What can I do? We're going to wait. I'm not happy. What? It's kind of funny. All right. Well, I don't think it was meant to be. Too many good draws to not draw here. <laughs> Yep. It, I probably, yeah, I've, I've waited as long as I could. I, I really, really didn't want it to come to this, but I just don't think I can afford to wait any longer. So we're going to just get Artful Takedown and be unhappy. I waited like five turns for one of our Might of the Masses or a Beast Whisper or a Wood Shaper or a Cavalier or a worm or anything. I might swap the Renewal for another Gorgon. Is that even good? Yeah, it attacks into the Informant. That's probably pretty good. So, could be worth our time. So they're just playing Counterspell Dot Deck now. Well, that's good information to know. Is there anything we can do about that? Probably not. Probably not. So we'll bring in the Gorgon. Yep, ditch the renewal. It's the only plan I'm seeing. Is the Recluse even good here? Not really, no. Let's ditch it. Let's bring in Wary Oka, Okapi. Someone, uh, Okapi, yeah, that's what it is. I've had a few people get sensitive about my pronunciation here. Um, is there anything else I can do? I guess Pax Favor maybe helps us play around the takedown. Eh, it sort of does. Okay. And then we ditch, like, something that I don't see. Prey Upon's not great against all of the... Well, it's not good against the takedowns, but otherwise it's pretty good. Ah, whatever. We'll just do it like this. 
we'll play first and hope that we can do better here. I don't really like this hand. I'm not going to lie. I feel like we put no pressure on our opponent and we're really just heavily reliant on drawing a white or we do literal nothing. Is that about right? We do have the three pitiless Gorgons now, so maybe it's a keep. All right, we'll risk it. Funny thing is, I feel like we should be able to beat the devious cover-up plan, but, yeah. Well, that was a good draw. Let's get the companions down now. And actually, then at least next turn we can go locks it on plus prey upon. That is actually pretty slick. Okay, good. So, we'll eat the sprite. We're going to eat the sprite with the Loxodon, I think, not the spy bug. So we go land. Do I have enough to do this? One, two, three, four, five. I do. We missed the prey upon, but honestly, I think it's worth it. Okay, so what we do now is attack with the scout and the loxodon. Oh, well, that's fine, actually, isn't it? So we just pump here. Then we prey upon. Get in for ten. And we do actually have to play a land if we ever want to get the, the worm out, so that's all right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it sucks, but like I said, what are you supposed to do? You can't play your six drop unless you get to six lands. So how do you get to six? How do you jump from four lands to six lands? Turns out it's not possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, looky here. Beat the devious cover-up deck. Uh, I feel like our only two game losses have been Flood so far, which is surprising because we're doing the 16 land plan, right? Yeah. Um, and it's not like we're lacking top end by any stretch. It's actually kind of shocking we're losing to Flood considering we have Beast Whisper, Underrealm Lich. Both these alone should be... We should be seeing one of them to cover for... Uh, flood, but uh, despite that, the games we're not flooding, we're bas we're just winning with Loxodon. So yeah, our our games have either been flood lose or Loxodon win. Well, I'll I'll take it. That's how good. It's a testament to how good Loxodon is. All right, we'll see you in round three. Round three, we'll keep. We saw we have our ace in the hole here, right, with Loxodon. So 
I assume keeping is the best plan. Uh-oh, Boros. Might be in trouble with this one, huh? Ornery Goblin. Well, could be worse. Hmm. Well, I got a land here, which is actually good. So, we can go Recluse, but if they attack with both, I think we're just going to Bonds this. Well, if I play the Recluse, say they attack, I know that then I know they have a trick. So then I can Okay, we're gonna we're gonna play the Recluse. If they attack with the goblin, they have a trick. So then we can at least attempt to play around the trick with prey upon, like if they tap out or something. Okay, so they have Luminous Bond. So... What is the plan now? I guess the plan is... What is the plan? I guess we Bonds and Prey Upon, yeah. So next turn we can go scout plus loxodon. It's not bad. Lock it. That's unexpected. Cashing it out. No play. Hmm. Well, getting in there. So, Crushing Canopy at least has a couple targets now. Luminous Bond, which is nice to be able to surprise and do. Guess I should have played the Gorgon first, but this this will just because we could have gotten some more damage in, but this'll do. It's also why I've said Righteous Blow is not a good card for a while. But I guess there's times where it can do some stuff. Unfortunately, this is a difference between being lethal and not being lethal next turn because of not playing the pre-combat Gorgon, but to be honest, I'd completely forgotten about the uh, the Righteous Blow. I mean, I guess the good news is I can yeah attack it. They weren't technically dead, but we'll take it. So, um, Crush Contraband also deals with their... I, I think we prefer the Canopy. We want to keep the curve low here. Um, can I lower the curve? Like, Take Heart actually does seem like a valuable card to have. Life gain is obviously insane when you're going up against a deck such as our opponents. Uh, Sprouting Renewal. 
is a main deck way to deal with Luminous Bond already. So maybe we just keep that in. Maybe we ditch the Worm. Take out a little bit of our top end. Just We're actively looking for ways to cut the curve down. Do we want to cut the Lich? I actually think it's not a bad idea. Why don't we cut the Lich? We'll cut the Guild Gates. And that way, maybe our mana is a little bit cleaner too. And then we just add a couple more of these. No planes, please. So then we still have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven green, and three, six, nine white. Yeah. Okay. Pax favor, another way to potentially get by a righteous blow or any burn spell of some sort. But frankly, I th think we're okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I don't really like this hand. We're on the draw. Mm. Pretty slow, though. Prey Upon doesn't really do anything with this hand, nor does it do much if we draw one of our two or three drops. And Wood Shaper's not coming. I think we're actually going to mull it. It just it doesn't do anything. This one we'll keep. We'll keep that on top. Although maybe I didn't have to keep it on top because of the flower flourish, but that's okay. All right, Pegasus Gorgon, deceptively good against the uh, fire urchin, isn't it? Wojek bodyguard. Well, we found our luminous bond target. I guess if we draw an untapped land, we can go. Gorgon plus Prey Upon, which could be valuable. Legion Guild Mage, alright. Ooh, Maniacal Rage, well. Okay. We got the untapped land, so technically we could go Gorgon Prey Upon. Two cards left in their hand. Hmm. I think we probably do it. Gotta just slow the damage. The best of our ability here. Mm-hmm. All right, well, when you got the goods, you got the goods. Wood Shaper, okay. So, Recluse gives us a blocker. For the flyer, we probably need that. Mm. 
relevant draw for Exaxi's kill, huh? Well, that's too bad. Okay. Anything we can do differently here? Is there just, is there anything? How do I beat this opponent better? What can I do? Have the canopy already. Have the renewal. This doesn't do anything. This is probably too expensive. Do I want to play more cheap things? This can technically trade with a Wojak bodyguard. That's true. Maybe we ditch the wood shaper for Okapi. Wait, I thought I brought you in. Guess I didn't. That's all I can think of. All right, back at her. Got to play first. We'll keep. I think we're just going to cash out this Flower Flourish turn one because it's just a good opportunity to do it. And I forgot, we're more, yeah, we're more green. Even with this hand, we're more green. So, all right, drop the, I guess we drop the dissident. I can attack into that actually. And assure if they block. I feel like it's okay with me. Mm. Ah, maybe not. It's just too powerful to not go for the assemble. So let's play a pity. I think the attack was actually still okay though, because there was a chance they didn't block. Okay. Recluse. Get in with the Gorgon. They're missing land drops too, which is important. I mean, I could do the... There's no reason to do a sure here. Play the Recluse. Next turn we can attack with Dissident and Pump too. Slesnia Locket. Super confused. Alright, nice draw actually. So get in with the Dissident now. Play the Guild Mage. Unless they block, which would be fine. I guess they could have had a take heart there, which would have gotten us pretty good, actually. Rampaging Monument, yeah, well, it's pretty good too, actually. Skyline Scout, okay, so we'll get in with the Dissident. We'll pass.
we can make tokens or make a bunch of tokens. Both are good options. Garrison Sergeant. Well, I guess the good news is they don't have a gate. So we can actually assemble or we can just make the token. I kind of like making token more. Cause then we can still do some sort of tactical assure. Cause it's not like we can attack anyway. Um, Let's uh, swing at the dissident. I want to see how they block. They still don't block. Hmm. All right. Leave up the assemble. Leave up the guild mage again. Not bad. Could blow up the locket. I used to, no, I guess can only blow up a hawk. But they do have maniacal rage in there, so might not be a bad idea. Let's get in with the dissident again here. I mean, they're gonna have to block eventually. So they have. Something, huh? Hmm. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to bite now. I've committed. Oh, well, I guess that could be worse. Uh, all right. One land away from. Assure, unfortunate. Can you imagine if I had the Assure? Can you can you even conceive if I had the mana for Assure there? The amount of value I would have gotten. Kill your bomb. Get rid of Collar the Culprit. Keep my 5-5. Five five. One land away. Uh, okay, interesting. Hmm. All right. Still in the token making business here. We still have the thinger uh, sprouting renewal, so we can take care of monument that way. 
That's true. We also have like Beast Whisperer and all sorts of other goodies. Prey upon. Well, doesn't do that much right now. They're very far away from being able to cash out the Selesnia locket, too. Need two more planes. Guess we can play the scout and still make a token now. I mean, I guess if they have Deafening Clarion, this becomes a 5-5 five, five, and this becomes a 2-4. It's pretty harsh. Luminous Bonds, less of a big deal. To be honest, I'll probably just crush... Well, do I want to crush and canopy it? No, I'd rather make a token. Or would I? Actually... Uh... I don't know. We have Flower Flourish, too. Oh, never mind. That's too bad. <laughs> I'm looking pretty good right now. Um, so if I assemble now, and we get in with eight tokens, they block three of them, they take ten, it's probably worth it now, right? Oh, wow, yeah. It's pretty good. Um, uh, let's see here. Best move. Okay. We'll get in with everything. So these two, of course, will pay for the scout. We'll take heart here. Prey upon here. And then pass.
Uh, okay, sprouting renewal. Splashing sprouting renewal. Street riot. Mm hmm. Okay. All right, well, one of the more uh, bizarre matches I've had in this format, but ended up getting a victory for the draft, which is pretty awesome because our rounds one and two opponent were probably our worst matchups are, I would say, Demir and Grixis, just because their long game plan tends to be better than a Selesnya mid-range's long game plan. But we saw zero disinformation campaigns, even though I would say this draft, I'm probably the most prepared for a disinformation campaign that I've ever been with Sprouting Renewal, Crushing Canopy, and the other thing, uh, Crush Contraband. Uh, so pretty happy to get a victory with this deck. Um, and it really, I mean, we played Underrealm Lich zero times. We played Beast Whisperer once, drew one card off of it, and then it died. So our... And we played a sure symbol one time as well. So we really just won basically every match on the back of a venerated Loxodon, which maybe shouldn't be surprising because the card is so good. But all right. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next one.